Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today it's another trying to fix video. Another video where I try to fix something which is faulty. So this item here has actually been sent in by a viewer. His name is David and it is, let me show you it now. Oh, this is empty. It is, you can probably tell by the shape of it, a, -da, a PlayStation Vita. But this one here is the slim one, so this is the second version. And I've never had one of these, I've never taken one of these apart, I've never even used one before. I have to say, it's actually nicer than I thought it would be. So I've already got the PlayStation 1, the fat version of the OLED screen, but this one here is supposed to have better battery life and also it's a little bit lighter as well. And it still feels like a premium product. So basically with these videos, just take it for entertainment. I may not get this fixed, there's a good chance I won't get it fixed because I've never taken it apart before. But the guy who sent it to me, David, said he fully understands if I can't fix it, but if I can fix it, he would like it back and he said he will pay for spares. But if I can't fix it, he's more than happy for me to keep this for spares myself. So I asked him exactly what was wrong with it and he basically said that the Vita was fine and everything works until one day out of the blue with no damage, it just wouldn't charge and then it eventually ran out of battery and now it won't switch on at all. So to begin with, let's plug it into a charger and see what it does because just a very slim chance, but there is a chance that maybe David's USB cable was faulty or maybe the charger was faulty. I know it's unlikely and I'm sure he's checked it all out, but still we want to start simple and then get harder. So I'm just going to turn it on just to see if it does do anything which it doesn't, right? So nothing's happening when I turn it on. So what I'm gonna use is, I'm gonna use the charger from my PlayStation Vita. The only problem is, with the fat model, it's different. It's like a proprietary charger, while with this one here, really probably the best feature of this is that it's a normal micro USB, which is good. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take out that from there, and then I'm gonna plug in another USB cable another micro USB cable into this one here. So let's plug it in and let's uh, see what happens when I start charging it. Well, okay, so on my one, the PlayStation button lights up, but this one's not doing anything. I'm just gonna hold down the power button for about five to 10 seconds, see if this uh, lights up at all. No, it's doing absolutely nothing. Right, let's have a very quick look in this little port, see if I can see any damage. Let me get a torch. Okay, so I've zoomed right in now and you can see that the port, it looks okay. I can see one, two, three, four, five pins in there. They don't seem to be bent or anything, don't seem to be particularly dirty. The, uh, the port looks to be clean, even if I look in at the very bottom, it's gonna be hard to see it on camera. There we go. There, perfect. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I mean, they're not shiny, bright but uh, don't think it's the charge port on this end. Right okay let's uh, zoom out. Let me plug in the cable and I'm just going to give it a little wiggle around see if it's really loose. So I can't really tell, I mean it is, it is loose but I can't really tell if it's the, this is loose in the socket or whether it's the socket itself which is loose. Right, what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna leave that charge for a while. I'm just gonna look at the output of this one here because this is for my Vita. Right, this is five volts at 1500 milliamps. I think what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna increase that up. So this charger here is five volts at 2.4 milliamps, sorry. 2,400 milliamps, so 2.4 amps, and this one here is 1.5 amps, 1,500 milliamps. So I think I'm gonna use that one instead of using the Sony one, just in case this one requires more juice than the original one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna leave that for a while now because I did have PlayStation Vitas in the past, bought them 40 off eBay, and they said that they didn't turn on, and all it needed was a good charge up. So I'm just gonna leave that there for a good you know, 15 minutes or so just to see if it starts charging or not. So I'll come back to this video then. Okay, so about, I'd say half an hour's passed because I've been chatting on the phone and it's still not doing anything. So this thing is definitely not charging. So just one more time now, I'm gonna hold down the power button, but it should have lit up by now. 
So I think what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take it apart. And I'm wondering whether the battery's failed. It's just a bit weird how he said that it's just, you know, just stop charging all of a sudden. you think with the battery it'd be getting weaker and weaker and weaker and then just go. But I'm not sure. Let's have a, let's have a look. Maybe if it is wobbly, maybe some of the inside contacts has broken. It's possible that while it was charging it might have got knocked or something. But uh, yeah, we're not going to know that until we open it up. So let me get my mat out and some tools and let's see what's happening with it. Right, so first things first, let's see if there's any SD cards in it. Let's pop them out, which there is. 8 gigabyte one. And let's have a look up here, see if there's any games in it. No, no games. Right, let's uh, unscrew it. So it looks like we've got some screws here. We've got a screw here up the top, and there's also a couple of screws at the bottom. Then hopefully it will prise apart. They just look like little crosshead screws. So I'm going to use a, what should I use? Double zero, I presume. Right, I can't see anything else. So I'm hoping now that it will start to start to come apart. Here we go. It was the uh, the jack there, it was the audio jack that was making it hard. Okay, so it comes across, it comes apart there, leaving the buttons and stuff behind. I've got to be careful because there is a ribbon cable connected at the bottom here. Right, there we go. So I'm finally in. That was a struggle to say the least. So I'm pretty sure this hasn't been taken apart before. I'm doing this very carefully now because as you can see there's a ribbon cable down at the very bottom that's still attached to it. And that must be for the rear touchpad. There we go. Right, so that's off there. Now this is the battery here. Ah, this is interesting. If you look here, to me it looks like there's water damage. So let me get right in here and show you. Right, so if you begin with, if you look at that USB, the micro USB, can you see there's silver on this side, but not on this side. It looks like it's kind of been worn away. And also, if you look at the audio jack here, can you see that there's a little bit of corrosion there, the green stuff? And also, if you just look at these contacts here, it just kind of look like it's been a little bit, a little bit damaged. I wonder if this has suffered from a bit of water damage at some stage. And again, if you have a look at that, I don't know what that is there. Let me give that a little scrape. Yeah, look at it all. Now, I wonder, was something there or is it just built up? Yeah. Right, there's a lot of corrosion there. I hope that that wasn't a small component. You know, whether there was some little fuse or something that's protecting. That's protecting it because you can see all the mess here. Maybe not, I'm not sure. Right, okay, let's, uh, I'm going to delve into this a little bit deeper, I think. See what's going on here around this area. I suppose what I could do to begin with is, I could charge it, couldn't I? And I could go across these points here with my multimeter and see if we get any voltage. Because from the battery here, it looks like there's a red, white and black cable. So I'm thinking maybe the, uh, 
the, the plus is going to be the red one, the negative, the black, and maybe the white ones, some kind of uh, tester to see if the battery is okay, you know, to say that, for example, I'm charged or I'm not charged. Now let's get the multimeter. Right, so I'm just going to go on volts DC on here. Right, so I've got that plugged into there. So in theory now, this should be voltage going into the battery. So I'm wondering if, there, if there's going to be any voltage up here or not. See, maybe not because maybe it's the white wire that needs to be connected to read anything. Right, okay, so there's nothing there. Or there's just tiny... one. I think I'm going to take this middle board out because I want to see the corrosion. I want to see what's happened here to cause this or the plating to come off. All right, so this is the board here. Ah, here we go. Here we go, right, let me get a macro on that to show you. Right, okay, so this is the audio jack, the headphone jack, and if you have a look, you can see a little bit of corrosion here. Well, quite a bit of corrosion, but now let's move along. Da, 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 da. There we go. Look at the state of that. Right, so... Maybe, oh, do you know what? If corrosion's got onto the board here, I wonder whether the board's ruined or not. You know, the pads and stuff. Right, what I'm going to do is, I don't want to scrape too much, I'm going to get a toothbrush and I'm going to get some IPA and give this a good clean and then to see exactly what we're working with, maybe some of these maybe some of the pads are completely gone I mean you can see there really is a lot of corrosion and remember it's not just this side because you can see all the platings come off the USB connector but it's also this side as well so if those pads have been completely eaten away even getting a new uh, USB port isn't going to help that but you never know right so I'm going to be using some of this uh, IPA alcohol It's 99.9% Let's give it a real good clean and let's see what we end up with. I'm going to clean the whole bottom of the board here. And obviously I'm doing both sides as well. And I should be wearing gloves with this alcohol because apparently it can start to dry out your hands. a bit worried about what that was on the board. Remember the thing I was scraping away earlier? I'm hoping that it might be just one of these kind of little test points. You know these little points that you get on the board sometimes? But uh, yeah, I'm just a little bit worried about this because obviously if there is supposed to be a component there, it might not be letting the voltage through that component. I'll keep cleaning that, hopefully it will become apparent. Okay, so I've given it a good clean up with the IPA and now I'm going to zoom right in using a macro feature and I'm going to have a really close look just to see what it looks like now. Okay, so this is it zoomed in now and although it does look better than before, it's still pretty corroded. So I'm just going to give these a quick wobble just to see if they're, uh, if they're moving or not. Yeah, that's loose. Can you see that one's loose? There you go, that one's gone. That one's gone. Oh, that one's gone completely. That one's about to fall off. Yeah, every one of them are loose. Right, okay. Uh, hmm. Not sure what to do now because I think on a USB there's only four of them used anyway. And this is like on the go cables, but this isn't going to be on the go anyway, so I might be lucky. I don't know whether this one here, because this one looks like it's about to break. I don't know whether this one here would be the one of the data ones because I think the two outside ones are the voltage ones but they're all loose. My worry is is that the pads underneath have completely gone. 
I think what I'm going to have to do here is, because I'm not going to be able to get under them to clean, and obviously they're that corroded that they've actually come off, so there might not actually be, I mean I know now this is probably why it's not charging, you know, there might be other faults as well, but let's say it's linked to this, I think I'm going to have to take off this USB port to get to the pads underneath, and then it looks like I'm going to have to renew it. I wonder is there a way I could just try to resolder it back on though, because that would be nice. I think maybe before I do that, because I mean I haven't got one of these ports, I know you can buy them, but I think I'm going to use the fiberglass brush just to see if I can clean it more, because look, I mean this is kind of coming off, and then if I can clean it more, you never know, I might be able to get the solder back on, but if I can't get to the corrosion underneath, the solder's not going to make a good connection. But I'll see, I think I'll use the fiberglass pen to begin with and try to rough it up a bit more. This one here, I've just moved the pin to the side and I can definitely see there is still a contact underneath it. So if I could just slightly move each of them, can you see on the right hand side here, this one here? Or to my right, uh, then if I could move each of them and clean the contact, then I should be able to get a new solder connection on each of them. Because it definitely looks like there's contacts under each of them. So I've just been looking through this little jeweler's loop here and to me it does look like there is a pad underneath here and it looks like it goes from here to this bit here and then from here through here. So maybe this is some sort of like fuse to protect the rest of it. So I'm thinking this is where the voltage comes through. The problem is when I press down on it and go to here there's no continuity and I thought by pushing down you should have got to continuity between here but maybe the pads underneath are still slightly dirty I'm not too sure but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the soldering iron out put plenty of flux here and I'm just going to see if I can get these to stick again because right now absolutely every one of them are moving so they're not sticking at all and then uh, you never know it might work I won't know until I try it so that's what I'm going to work on now Right, so I'm going to try and add some solder to this now. I've got my station up to 380 degrees C and this is the small little tip I'm using. So as you've seen there, I was trying to solder it, but unfortunately it's not sticking. All that's happening is the solder's just sticking to the top of the pins, and I think it's because there's no solder left underneath and there's so much corrosion and stuff that the solder's not flowing to it. So I think what I'm going to have to try and do is remove this USB port and then actually gauge the pads, see how good they are, see whether I can get any fresh solder onto it, and then there's a chance I can reuse this port again if it comes off smoothly. If not, I'll just have to buy another port if the pads are good and put a new one on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some low melt solder and I'm going to put it on the pads here, all across here, here, here and obviously the other side as well and then hopefully I'm going to try to remove this completely and then see what the pads look like. Ok 
Okay, I've covered everything in Captain Tape now, so I'm going to apply some hot air to it and hopefully I'll be able to get it out. Now, the reason I've put the low melt solder on is because let's say if normally it was to melt at three or 400 degrees and let's say if the low melt is supposed to melt at around 100, then hopefully by mixing it together it might melt at maybe 200 or 250, in which case then there's going to be less chance of me of damaging everything else because there's a lot of other components that are close to it. So that's what I'm going to work on now. Okay, so I've got the heat set to about 250 degrees C and I've got the air set about halfway on my meter. So let's see now what happens with this. I'm going to turn the airflow up a little bit. I'm going to turn the heat up because nothing's happening here. I'm going to go up to 300 degrees. Well, I'm going to have to go up even higher because all that's happening is the low melt is melting but the, uh, the original solder isn't so I'm going to go up to 350. Okay. There we go, it's out. Okay, so I don't know now whether this port will be reusable or not, it might be completely melted but it doesn't so ma matter so much about the port, it's the board the important bit because I can always replace this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is take all the captain tape off and I'm going to give everything a good clean. I'm also going to try to remove all the old solder as well with the soldering iron and also a uh, solder sucker. Actually, from here, it does look all right, doesn't it? There's definitely pads there. Well, I'm going to get my multimeter, and I'm just going to go across a few things, see if there's any continuity. Right, so you'll hear it beep when the leads touch together. So first of all, I think... These ones at the end, this one at the end should be the ground, which it is. Yeah, I right, know this is the one I'm worried about here. Yes, excellent. Brilliant. Right, and it looks like these ones go to this thing here. And let's go into that one there. Let's see if it's short in there. No, no. Yes, excellent. Now do this one. No, no. Yeah, there. So now this might be the one that's not used. Oh no, that goes to there. Okay, and then this is the ground. Fantastic. Okay, so I'm going to clean those up a little bit more and then I'm going to apply fresh solder to them. Also, I want to get the solder out of here and then I'm going to look into how much a new port costs. Or I might even look into the old one, see if I can clean up the old one. You never know. I might be able to do because the uh, pads are clean. Now that I've got the old one off, I might be able to use the fiberglass brush to get rid of all the abrasive on the bottom. Because remember, it wasn't the socket that was faulty, it was just here that was faulty. Oh, this is really good news. I thought those pads would be missing and I thought I was going to have to do some sort of jumper wires between the pads and, for example, these little bits here or the pads and that one there. Well, I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but I cannot clear these two holes out. I'm using wick, I'm using the sucker, and it just doesn't seem to want to work. I've got plenty of flux on there. You can see all the flux burning. I'm trying to get it from both sides, and uh, really struggling on this. 
The reason I want to get it out is because if I get a new one of these or even replace the old one, I, I don't want to do it using the hot air. I want to do it using the soldering iron, so I need it to fit in here. Okay, so I've got a much smaller tip on it now, or a more pointy tip. So I'm going to try to get into the hole now and hopefully it will melt the inside of it. The soldering line's at 460 and it's still not melting it. Oh, I can't believe this thing is taking me so long and causing me so much hassle. I, don't, I really don't know, I've got a tiny tip on, so the big tip I know will apply more heat to it, well over a bigger area, but that didn't suck it out. And now I'm in here and you can see it's just kind of like, it's like I'm just trying to melt a bit of lead and just shoving it around the place. It doesn't actually seem to be mm, balling up or anything. There you go, I'm getting a bit off there. Okay, that was an absolute epic, and the problem is, was these two ones here. I just couldn't clean them out, no matter how much I did it. All that was happening is I had my temperature up to maximum, so that's 480 degrees C. I was adding flux and everything, and all it was doing was like moving it around as if it was just kind of like melted lead. It didn't, it didn't basically ball up, it wouldn't suck out, it wouldn't go into my braid. It was just like it wasn't getting hot enough. It was just kind of like mushy. These ones cleaned up lovely. I can see my pads here, but unfortunately those two there were a real pain to do anything with. So uh, there's nothing really I can do with that. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put flux on these pads here because I wanna get a nice little bit of solder on each of them and hopefully they will clean up good. soldering iron at 350 degrees C and I'm just going to try to rub a little bit of solder onto these five little pads in the middle. I'm using just a flat off the soldering iron. Doesn't seem to want to go on this last one. Filled up those holes again that I spent about half an hour trying to free. Now, see, I've got a problem here, and what it is is there still must be corrosion because these are not solders not sticking to these pads. They are to the middle three, but not the ones on either edge, and they're the important ones, especially this one here. Yeah, you can see it's not wanting to stick. I've got plenty of flux on there. Right, so I'm going to have to try to clean that even more. This is what I mean by, look, can you see here, by just moving it around, can you see it's not actually really melting it, it's just kind of moving it around the place. So now I've got that completely full again. Let's see the soldering line sticking into it. Well, there's no point in me worrying about that now. I need to worry about why the solder's not sticking to the middle ones here. So I'm going to try to use the fiberglass pen on it again. Okay, so I'm going to try again. I'm using a little bit of flux.
Yes, okay, it's got solder on it this time. Now obviously there's huge clumps of solder on these ground pads there, but at least, at least there's definitely solder on that last pin now. No solders going to this middle one though, so I'm going to give that a bit more of a scrape. There we go, solder's on it now. So it's obviously the corrosion and that's stopping the solder from sticking. Cleaned up. I'm really happy with everything apart from these two ground pads here. You can see these are perfect and these two are perfect, but these two were horrible. I was basically stabbing the soldering iron through it and all that was happening was it was just moving it around the place. So obviously my soldering iron, even though it's up to 480 degrees C, it mustn't have the power to really you know, get into it because what I felt is I just felt the board getting hotter and hotter and I could tell that the solder wasn't fully melting here. It was just kind of going mushy and pushing around the place but still it will be fine because it's going to be held on properly with these four other ones here and here I will be able to get some sort of connection to it the most important thing are these pins in the middle here and now if I do a quick test I can see that one is shorting out so that's good this one is this one is this one is and the ground. Yeah, so that's all good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and clean up the existing micro USB because I haven't got a new one to put in it. And then if it doesn't clean up, it's not a problem. I go and buy a new one, but I might actually be able to get this one to clean up okay, but I won't know until I started it. So that's what I'm going to be working on now. to clean it up but one of the legs have just come off and it was that leg that was loose when I was testing it to begin with so there's no point in me going any further I might as well just get a new port and then it will be all nice and clean and new rather than trying to battle with this one now obviously there is a chance that this isn't going to fix it if there's something else wrong with it apart from the port but looking at the state of that and the fact they were all loose that makes sense that it definitely is the port i'll be very unlucky if there was something else wrong as well so i'm going to Okay, so I've ordered them up from eBay. I've actually ordered two of them. I've got one from China, which is going to take a long time to arrive, but it was really cheap. And I got the other one from the UK. And it was actually a lot more expensive than I thought. It was £7.95. I was sort of thinking it'd be about £3. So I was a bit out with my, with my thinking there. So the one I've got, which is going to be arriving hopefully in a few days' time, is £7.95. And then for future, I bought another one. And that was only £2.06p. Now, maybe this one might be far better quality, or maybe they're going to be exactly the same who knows but this one I will keep just for future reference and then if I ever get another one with 40 USB ports I know I don't have to wait for it to arrive and then it's going to be a lot cheaper to fix so when that arrives in a few days I will solder it in and hopefully hopefully we might have a working PlayStation Vita so I'm more hopeful now because when I first saw seen that corrosion I thought maybe the pads and stuff were gone but I'm happy with the pads now and as long as that is the only fault then I'm quite confident, not fully confident, but I'm quite confident that we will be able to get this to work, but only time will tell. So I'll see you in a few days. Right, so a couple of days have passed now and the port has actually come through. This is the one from the UK. So this is the micro USB port. So I'm hoping now 
I will be able to get this in. I haven't taken this out yet, but it looks to be similar or the same as the one that I removed from the PlayStation Vita. Let's just double check it. That's nice, nice new port. All right, let's uh, zoom in and have a look at the differences between them. See if they look exactly the same. Yeah, that looks the same, same sort of size. Let's look at the underneath. Excellent, right. Let's try and get this in. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna try and do it, not with hot air, just with the soldering iron. So let me see if it will go into its little home to begin with. Which I think it will. Just these ports at the back, I'm, uh, it's kind of stopping me from going in. But I'm hoping once I heat it up, you know the ones that I had problems with before, these two. But all the other pins, the side pins, are definitely going in nice. Just trying to force it into its hole. You know what, that looks pretty flat. I think that's going to do the job. So I'm going to solder up these big pads here first. And I'm using quite a thick bit on my soldering iron because I want as much heat as possible to go into one, two, three, four and the outer two here. And then what I'll have to do is I'll have to wait for the soldering iron to cool down and then I'm going to use this fine tip here just to try to kind of put a bit of solder on and just drag it down. Remember I've already put solder on the pads and I'm going to cover everything in flux so I'm hoping, hoping it's going to work alright. So that's what I'm going to do now. Let's start with the flux. Put dot there, dot there and there, there, and there. And I think I'll put a little bit on this side here as well. I can give it all a good clean up afterwards. Try to get it from underneath because it's uh, it's kind of playing up. I don't know if my soldering iron is playing up or not. It just seems to be not really melting it properly. So it melts it on here, but as soon as I put it on the board, it just seems to take all the heat out of it. So I'm just putting a bit of downward pressure on. Yeah, it seems to be sticking. I'm going to put more heat on. I'm going to go up to 400. Yeah, it's really weird. I can feel the heat travelling all the way up the board, but the soldering iron's sticking to it. I'm wondering whether this board's just really good at draining the heat away from here. Could that be possible? Maybe if it's a thicker board than normal, I don't know. Right, okay, I know I said I wasn't going to use any heat, but I think I might do because uh, I just want to melt this solder a little bit with the heat gun just to see if it can flow more into the board rather than using the soldering iron. So I'm going to put the heat on at 400. And I'm having the air flow about midway. Now, I'm not going to cover up anything with the captain tape because I'm only concentrating on this little bit here. Right, so I can see it's gone shiny now. So hopefully it's going to flow into place. I'll do this side now.
Okay, I'm happy with that now because I've definitely seen it go a bit shinier. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let my soldering iron cool down and I'm going to swap it to the smaller tip and then I'm going to try to drag a little bit of solder across these five little pins here. Okay, so I've swapped over the soldering tip now to this little one and I've reduced the temperature to 350 degrees. So I'm just going to put a bit of flux on the pins. Right, so I've zoomed right in now. Now the pins look a little bit crooked. I'm thinking that might be just a bit of an optical illusion from the, the flux. So I'm going to put the soldering iron on them and hopefully then it will uh, clear up a little bit. So to begin with, I'm not actually going to put any solder on my tip. I just want to melt off a bit of the flux and try to get these to stick to the solder underneath. Excellent. Right, so now you can see they are each on their pads. So now I'm just going to add a little bit of solder to my iron. Just trying to get rid of those little solder bridges there. I'll put a little bit too much solder on my iron. I'm getting there. I'm going to just hit each of them with the tweezers just to see if they're moving around the place and then I need to clean it up and have a look. Do you know what I can't tell because it's so sticky because of all the flux. So I'm going to clean it off and then see, see what it looks like afterwards. Okay, so there we have it, and they are all definitely stuck. Now, it's not going to look as nice as a professional job, you know, or as good as it did when it came from the factory, but as long as they're stuck on there, so I know it looks like they're sitting on top, but if you look there, it does look like there is solder underneath it. So I'm thinking that's going to be okay. I'm actually quite pleased with that, considering how corroded it was, because I did struggle cleaning this one up. I think... Uh, I think I'm happy with that. So now it's a case of putting it all back together and seeing if it's going to work or not. Let's have a look at the inside. And there we go, look at that, nice and clean. All those pins look nice and straight and everything. So hopefully now this is going to work when I put it back in there. Right, let's get this reassembled. Right, I just want to do a quick continuity test just before I put it back together. So I'm going to start with the earth pin, or the ground pin, right on this side here. So every time I touch these together, it's going to short out. That's fine. Now let's do this one to here. Yeah, this one to here. Yeah, not short in there, good. This one to here, and not short in there, excellent. And this was the one, the main one, I think, which does the power. Excellent. Right, so that's definitely behaving differently than it was before. Now let's get it back together. Okay, so I've got all the bits out, so obviously it's just going to be a reversal of how I took it apart. So I'll be just fast forwarding through this bit. Right, the moment of truth. Let's plug it in and see if we get anything. Now it might take a while before it actually comes on. Yes, I've got a charging light. Oh, I thought it was here that was going to light up, but it's here. But that didn't light up earlier because I would have seen it. Brilliant. 
No, it's flashing. Okay, so what I'm going to have to do is leave this on charge for a while and then uh, turn it on and see if it does turn on. But I'm pretty sure, I mean, I was looking at the PlayStation button down here, but I would have noticed that if it was coming on before. Well, I hope I would have anyway. So, uh, I didn't know. That, that's the difference between these and the uh, original fat versions. Well, let me charge that up for a good half an hour or so and then see if we can get any life out of it. Because remember, this battery is completely drained. Right, so it's been charging up for now for about half an hour, maybe maybe longer, maybe about 45 minutes. So let's pop back in the memory card and see, see if it now works. So we've still got the light up here. No, it's still flashing like this. Oh, here we go. Ah, right, okay. Well, it didn't do that before, but it is showing that the battery is still completely depleted. I would have thought that maybe half an hour would have been enough. But, uh, or 45 minutes, whatever it's been, but maybe, maybe it's not. Right, well, look, it's, it's doing something more than it did before, because we didn't have that before. So there must be a bit of charge going into the battery now. I'm just going to unplug this and see if it will do the same thing. No, still just flashing orange. Right, okay, I think I'm going to leave it for a good hour, because maybe if the battery is completely depleted, maybe it will take a long time before it does start charging. You know, before the, there's enough charge in the battery to turn the Vita on. So I'm going, to, I'm going to leave it for a good hour and see what happens then. Okay, so about half an hour's passed. I've been a little bit impatient. I don't want to wait the whole hour. So let's see if it's doing anything now. I'm wondering if the battery's dying on it. Yes, look at that. Fantastic. So it did just need a while to charge up. I'm amazed it actually took that long. But look, steady light now. And it's coming on. Brilliant. Right, OK, let's just quickly uh, go through here. Right, so that's working. Touch screen still working. Right, let me just turn off the lights because I've got all the, uh, the lights reflecting in it. Right, there we go. Hopefully you can see it better now. Apologies for the reflections. So if you have a look up the top here, you can actually see that it is charging. You can see like a, a lightning strike going through it. So let's now unplug it. And you can see that the battery is really low. So that's really good. So that is working now. And now it's, uh, let's see if it starts charging again. Right, it's not charging again when I plug it back in. I wonder if that's because I'm not using the proper Vita charger. Got a green light here now. Let me get my Vita charger and see if it charges with that one. Let's plug in the actual Vita charger and see what happens when I do that one. Remember this is a Vita charger for the fat version. Yay, there we go. Charging. So obviously it's fussy that it needs to recognise the, uh, the Vita charger and not just the Android phone charger. Right, so that's, uh, that's brilliant news. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to just turn the volume up, make sure the volume's working. Yeah, that's that. And I just need to check the headphone jack because remember I was very near that and there was a bit of corrosion. And I also want to check a game. So let's uh, plug a game into here and while that's loading up, I'm going to get some headphones. Excellent. Right, okay, so the headphones are definitely working. So the last thing we have to check now is to make sure the analog stick and everything is working. I'm just going to plug it in and charge it while it's, uh, while it's doing this.
okay well that appears to be working just fine so yeah I'm really really happy with that it's charging and yet when I unplug it you can see that the battery is keeping its charge there it looks like it's be about halfway now so I'm gonna leave that charge up now for the next hour and hopefully or maybe two hours and hopefully the battery will be full so what I'm going to do is I'm not actually going to email David, I'm going to give him the link to the video. I'm going to put the video live first and then give him the link to give him the worry of uh, <laughs> the fact that I might not be fixing it because with all that corrosion there at that stage he might have thought that it wasn't fixable just like myself. So uh, yeah, I am really, really enjoyed this one. I've never done a, a micro USB port before so it's all a learning curve and I'm glad I did it. I didn't find it easy and I was kind of really confused why the solder wasn't doing what I wanted it to do. It looks like the heat was just draining all through the board rather than sticking in that spot there. But maybe that's the difference between having a good soldering iron and a bad one because my one is just an 80 pound one which is like a hot air station with a soldering iron and the air and everything so obviously the quality is not going to be fantastic. But I still managed to get it done and it's served me okay so far but obviously if you're a professional, which I'm not, maybe that's the difference between having a good one and a cheap one. But anyway, I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more trying to fix videos. Take care. Bye now.